Welcome to episode 4. Today we are going to add a camera object to track our main character and also add a bit of zoom to see him up close. So from our MMO folder, uh, we're going to go ahead and add an extra package to our image. And the folder we're going to call it is going to be called render. And the goal of this package is to kind of contain all of our uh, code that interacts with our rendering system. So specifically in here, the first thing we're going to add is a camera object. We'll call it camera.go. And we'll open it from here, engine, render, camera, dot go. We'll define it as a render package. Then let's define our camera struct. So then, then inside of our camera struct, we'll define a few objects that I think that we're gonna use. So the first thing we'll add is a pixelgl.window, and that's because the camera is gonna be operating on the window. So it'll be useful uh, inside the camera to know what the window looks like, like specifically what the window bounds are. And then we're also going to have a position, and that's the location in a world space where our camera is. And then we'll have the zoom of the camera, and that'll represent how much we want to zoom the world space to screen space. And then finally we'll have a matrix, which represents the full transformation that our camera is going to apply uh, to everything that gets drawn um, to the window. So just, just to see how that's going to look, is um, before we execute our draw functions, we'll do this or we'll do something like this. We'll basically set the transformation matrix of the window to that of the camera. So basically we'll calculate this camera dot mat and that'll represent the, the matrix that the camera is gonna transform everything by, uh, basically applying the camera transformation. And then we'll set the matrix of the window to that transformation. Then when we draw all of our people uh, to the window, uh, this camera matrix will automatically get applied to them. Then later on, we'll also do uh, win dot set matrix to the um, identity matrix. And this will kind of uh, revert the, the transformation matrix of the window back to what it usually starts as, or its default. Let me remove these for now, because we'll add those later. And then we'll go back to our camera. All right, so next let's define a constructor. All right, and here's how we'll start off the camera. We'll start off setting it the window up, the position to what we pass in the constructor function. Uh, we'll set the zoom to 1 to basically indicate that we don't want to zoom at all. And then we'll just start with a basic uh, uh, I did a new matrix for the uh, default camera matrix. Next in here, let's define an update function for the camera. And what this is going to do is it's going to recompute the uh, matrix that's attached to the camera. Specifically, this field is going to get recomputed. And then later on, we can use that field uh, in our actual uh, update loop, which we kind of described up here. So let's discuss how the world space translates into screen space. So you kind of have our world, which has all the trees and people in it, uh, and that'll get translated somehow by the camera transformation uh, into the screen space. And the screen space is basically represented uh, as a rectangle from 0, 0 to the width and height of the opened window. So we basically use the boundary rectangle of the window to determine what the screen space looked like. So in our case, this would be the 1024. 24 by 768 uh, window, uh, and that's kind of our screen. So we need to translate the world with the camera transformation into the screen. Um, so so uh, based off of our camera struct, we have two ways of doing that. We have the position of the camera, uh, and we also have the zoom of the camera. So let's first talk about the position of the camera and how that translates uh, world space into screen space. So we can translate the world space into screen space with our two parameters that we added to our camera struct. Uh, one was the position, and uh, the second one was the zoom. So let's start off with the position. Suppose we have our man, and he's standing here at uh, like 100, 100. And then we want to translate it so that the camera is snapped onto him. So kind of what that would look like in screen space is he would be centered in the middle. So that's kind of what we want. Um, so kind of he used to be like over here. Uh, and then we need to translate into the middle of the screen. So we can do that by making two movement operations. The first movement operation we'll do, we'll subtract his position, the X and Y of his position, to kind of move him to the corner of the screen. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll add his, uh, we'll add the um, center of the window um, to move him to the center of the screen. 
Next, based off of the zoom of the camera, we can actually modify the width and height to not show 1024 by 768 in the world anymore. So we can change this number uh, basically by still uh, zooming around the center point, which is where our man is now. Uh, and then we'll just uh, change the zoom part of the transformation to accommodate that. So we can kind of zoom in and out. Um, and because we're centered around this point, everything will look natural. Or rather, because we're zooming around this point, everything will look natural. Cool. Now that we understand how the camera transformation operates from uh, to convert from world space to screen space, let's finish writing our transformation matrix. So this is how our whole function will look. Uh, notably, I also um, took the win win dot center and just put it into a variable to clean things up a bit. And then to create our move position, uh, we basically do what we described in uh, the previous little excerpt, where we um, uh, take the we subtract out the x and y position of where the camera is, and then we add the screen center position to move everything back to the middle of the screen. Uh, and then we uh, when we build the transformation matrix, all we have to do is uh, move the camera by the move position that we defined previously, uh, and then we want to scale everything. Uh, around the screen center because that's kind of where our camera is operating on uh, and we want to scale it by the zoom amount and this will be cached into our camera object and we'll be able to extract it later. So whenever we're ready to use our camera.matrix uh, we can basically pull it out with this public getter function. We'll just do camera.mat. So now back in our main function or yeah back in our main function we can set up the camera object right outside of our uh, render loop. And we'll just move everything to, or we'll just set the camera starting point to be zero, 00. Next, right after we handle all of the input, we can update where our camera is. So we'll do camera.update. Or sorry, rather, before we do camera.update, uh, we first want to assign the camera position to uh, the proper man that we want to follow. Since our main character is going to be the first index of our people array, uh, we'll just use index zero and kind of hard code it for now. Eventually, we'll clean this up though. And then as described before, we'll set the window matrix to what the camera matrix had computed in the update function. And then we'll reset the camera, we'll reset the window matrix back to the identity matrix. Uh, and that should be all we need to do. So let's run our code. Okay, yeah, back in our main uh, our main.go file, uh, I had forgotten to add in the um, engine slash render package. So let's do that now. And then, oh yeah, back in the back in the render package that we just wrote, I forgot to add all the imports. All right, let's give it another go. So I called this pixelgl.vec, but it's actually pixel.vec. And this should be uh, c.win for camera.win. All right, it opened on a different screen, but here it is. And now uh, when we follow our, uh, I'm actually moving the man without a hat, but because the camera's following him, it looks like the other guy's moving. So once we add in a background, uh, it'll be more clear to tell who I'm actually moving. Cool, so we've made some good progress. So now the last thing we want to add is some camera zoom. So how we'll do that is we'll specify a zoom speed up above. And then down inside of our um, uh, render loop, what we'll do is we will uh, read in the mouse scroll, and then we'll use that to determine if the camera is being zoomed or not. So this function will return whether or not the mouse is being scrolled, and what it returns is basically a floating point number in the negative or positive direction by how much the mouse was scrolled. Okay, so then what we'll do here is we'll check to see if the scroll.y is uh, not equal to zero. And if it isn't equal to zero, that we, then we know that uh, there has been some amount of scrolling happen. Uh, also notably, there is a y and x axis for the mouse scroll uh, value. Uh, and that's because, you like on a trackpad, you could scroll in the uh, x direction as well. So we just want to detect the y direction scrolling. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll change the camera.zoom value and we'll just add to it the scroll.y value times the zoom speed. So let's run our code and see what happens. So now we can move our guy around and then we can also zoom in really, really far. And then we can also zoom out really, really far. And also if we zoom out far enough, you'll notice that uh, we basically get to zero at some point. So the scroll value is set to zero uh, and that's this point. And if we scroll one more time, we start getting to the negative zooms. So uh, what the negative zooms will do is they'll actually just invert the image. And now I'm still zooming out, but I'm zooming in in the negative value, or the negative direction, I guess. All right, well, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you later.